Hello, in this video I'm just going to go into more depth about how you can use existing cones. Like this is a cardboard cone that I just happen to have sitting around and I'm going to use it with my cone winder. In order to do that, you do need to 3D print a few different parts. You need to 3D print this, which is the cone holder and you can take off the bearings. So I've already taken off the original arm. So this is the original arm. And I took the bearings off of that and I put them onto this. So now the cone is held. Also, because the cone here is a different, um, you can see this one has more taper to it. And I did that so that it's easier for yarn to come off. But a lot of cones that I have, this is a pretty standard cardboard cone size. They don't have as much taper. So the arm configuration is a little bit different. So I also had to 3D print this arm. And then those are the only two parts that you have to 3D print. And I'll go into more details about how you can print uh, different arms and uh, cone holders later in this video, but it's quite easy and I've made it as easy as you can. Um, you don't have to have a 3D printer. Uh, there's places online that you can just order these parts um, for under 20 bucks and then you can support different cones. So it's actually, you know, pretty, pretty simple. But once you've uh, printed out those parts, you then remove the cone arm. Changing out the arms is actually quite easy. There's just four Phillips screws that you have to remove and then the arm will come right off and on the back I made it even easier because the nuts that hold these in place actually have little plastic walls next to them so that you don't have to worry about the nuts spinning while you're working on the screws. So it really is just take a Phillips screwdriver and take off these four screws and you can swap out an arm quite easily. And once the arm is installed you just insert this onto the arm holder. So there are a few things that you're losing that I'll just point out. Uh, so there are magnets in the one that I ship out and while I have holes for the magnets you're probably not going to get it's three millimeter uh, diameter by three millimeter long magnets and if you you can get those that's great that'll help uh, hold the arm holder in place but I found that you know it's really nice with these cones, um, everything fits perfectly, but uh, with 3D printed parts, the fit isn't quite as good and it's not really necessary. So I wouldn't worry about uh, magnets in those. I'm not putting magnets in, in these when I'm just sort of showing it off. Uh, also, another thing that this doesn't have is uh, I put a rubber ring around uh, my cone holder and that's just not something that's practical to put onto these. But again, uh, in all my testing, it's working okay. I added both the magnets and the rubber cone holder uh, pretty late in development just as ways to sort of improve the design but a lot of my early or all of my early testing just used it without those things and it worked pretty well a lot of beta testers never even tested this later version but um, anyway those are the only two real significant differences so once you've got the cone installed then it's just a matter of pulling the yarn through just like you would with the standard cones and then wrapping it around the drum or around the cone a few times pretty simple stuff so then at this point you're good to go
And there you have it, a fully wound cone onto a used cardboard cone. Works just fine. Another system I'm working on is a tube holder. So uh, this one's gonna require a few more tweaks. It's working, but not perfectly yet. So um, I won't show you how it works yet, but um, I'll definitely release the files for this uh, eventually. But the idea of this is that some people said they wanted to wind onto tubes. And while this isn't quite as ideal as a cone for a lot of people, I know that some people wanted them. So, so now I'm going to show you how in the software to generate a arm like this for holding the cone, a cone holder, and then also a cone if you want to 3D print cones of, of different sizes. So I will have files released. Uh, in a format that you can just 3D print them. This tutorial is more about showing people how they can do their own in case they have a, a cone that's not a standard size and they want to print uh, a holder basically for the cone winder that works with these different sized cones. So I will be releasing a file in a Fusion 360. So this is a um, an app. I pay for it because I'm a business, but I believe that there's a free version of it. I, I, I think there is. There certainly used to be a free version of it uh, for uh, people that are just um, hobbyists. So definitely look into that. But you'll, you'll need Fusion 360 or someone will have to have it uh, installed on their computer. And uh, then you'll get this file open and it'll sort of look like this, which is sort of confusing. So you can turn on the, or off the cone and the cone holder. Now you see just, just the arm like this and you can sort of rotate it. You may have to uh, get a tutorial on how to use Fusion 360. That's, I'm not gonna show you how um, everything works in the app, but there's some great tutorials out there. But that's the arm, this is the cone holder and then this is the cone and you can look at each of those independently and what i've done to make this as easy as possible is i've included uh in modify some uh parameters and let's show what that looks like here oh i can't you can't see it uh let me see if i can fix this Okay, there's some weirdness going on here. So I can only show you the parameters window or the Fusion 360 window. Sorry about that, but this is the parameter window. This will normally show up on the top of the other window we were just on. And inside of here, you can see that there's this smaller ID, a large ID, and a length. So that's the smaller inner diameter of the cone. Um, this is the larger inner diameter, so the bigger side of the cone, its inner diameter, and the length. I've got a video sort of showing what um, these measurements are. I'll insert that here. There's three measurements that you need from your cones. The first is an inner diameter for the larger end. And you need an inner diameter for the other end. And then on this case, the cardboard cone is around rounded so you actually need the inner diameter without the rounding so what i'm going to do is i'm going to measure the outer diameter here and then i would measure the thickness of the cardboard and subtract two times the thickness from the outer diameter to get the inner diameter if the cone hadn't been rolled in on itself on the end. And then you also need to measure the length of the cone. And I'm using a caliper here, but you can definitely just use a ruler or something and uh, just do the best you can. You need to measure it in millimeters, but if you measure it in inches, you can use an online tool to convert your inch measurement into uh, millimeters quite easily. So that's pretty much the only measurements you need. So let's say we've got a cone that has the same inner diameter for the small end, but the outer diameter is going to be, let's say 75. So somewhat bigger. And let's say the length is a little bit different. Let's say it's um, 180. So we'll change this one from 175 to 180. 
So now we've got the new cone and its inner diameter on the large end is bigger and it's slightly longer. So it's generated that. Uh, in addition to that, it's also generated a new cone holder that um, fits the new cone and it's generated a new arm. So you can sort of see from the site. Well, let's turn these other ones off. The arm has got some weird angles to it, and all of the correct angles are also computed uh, when you give it those new parameters. So it generates all three of these pieces. And then from here, uh, you can just right click on these and you save as mesh and export it as an STL format or whatever format your 3D printer wants to consume. And then you've got your file for a 3D printer and you can print it if you have a 3D printer or sometimes your local library will print these files. There's also several places online. I'll put a link in the uh, notes for this video showing uh, a page that gives you a bunch of different options. There's also people who just sell uh, different electric eel wheel files, which is great. I give these files away um, so that other people can use the files and, and sell them if they want. Uh, because I know that some people in the community aren't very technical and they just want to have the easiest way of getting these. And the easiest way is to just order the files from somebody who's already uh, printing other electric eel wheel files. The medium difficulty would be to take the files, which I, I share, and have some service online print them. Uh, and both of those options are explained on the page that I'm linking to in the show notes. And a third option is to own a 3D printer and you just print them yourself or know somebody who can do that. So uh, all of those options are supported and hopefully this video showed that it was easy to generate your own holder for different sized cones. Um, but I don't expect most people will have to do this. I just figure it's important to show the community how and then there'll probably be a few people out there who generate to all of the common cone sizes. And I'll, I'll definitely help out. I'm going to uh, try to support um, the ones that I know about, including the one I showed earlier, which is probably the most common sized uh, cardboard cone I found that fits easily onto the, my cone winder. Thanks for watching.